Maybe the most improved team in the Big Ten, the Northwestern Wildcats, won just one of their first four games, thanks in large part to an offense that really struggled, averaged a bit more than 16 points per game in that stretch. Since then, they have won three of four, the only loss a narrow defeat on Saturday in Columbus. The offense has more than doubled its point production in that time. In fact, in conference play, the Cats are fourth in the Big Ten in scoring. They were last in the non-conference. Their head coach, Pat Fitzgerald, joining us now from our studio in Evanston. And coach, we mentioned four-point loss in Columbus Saturday. So what has the message to your team been in the wake of that defeat? Well, close isn't good enough. You know, we left a ton of opportunities out there on the field. And, um, you know, it was a heck of a battle. But, but, but close isn't good enough. And, and this young team that we have has got to mature. We've got to grow up here. Uh, in a hurry because we're playing an outstanding football team on Saturday and uh, just incredibly impressed by the Badgers on tape and uh, it, it's going to be a huge huge challenge for us. I want to get to them in just a second and break it down a bit but first I want to go to a little bit of history. I mean the last time you guys played Ohio State it was that huge heavily hyped game in 2013. It was very similar. I mean you had every chance in the world to beat them and after you lost the season kind of spiraled out of control a little bit. So it seems to me the challenge for you after a narrow defeat is how do you not, as the saying goes, kind of allow them to beat you twice or in the case of a few years ago, sure. al allow them to beat you several times? What do you do as a coach to prevent a repeat of that? Well, I think our, our locker room is very different dynamic than we were back then. So I, I think, number one, that gives me great confidence that that should not happen. Uh, secondly, uh, you, you know, I, I think that uh, the, the way that we approach this week, uh, later in the season, uh, having a really good idea who we are, what our strengths are, what our areas that, quite frankly, we've got to improve in, we, we've got a clearer picture. And, and that team back then, it was, you know, I, I think maybe just collectively as a program, uh, we, we put too much into that game and, and uh, the results afterwards uh, obviously weren't acceptable. So I believe we're a different program, we're a different team right now in our current locker room. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're playing a great team, so it doesn't make it any easier. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's about what we do right here and right now. Well, Fitz, let's talk about right here, right now. You're still very much in the hunt in the Big Ten West. I mean, it's not difficult at all to put together a scenario where you guys win the West and end up in Indianapolis. Is that something that you are talking about with your guys, or is there just this assumption that, hey, they're smart fellas, they realize it, let's just focus on the next task at hand? You know, I think, I think you have to kind of go into November with, I, I think, a two-prong two approach. I think, first of all, it's my responsibility to paint the picture of kind of where things are at right now uh, you know, big picture, uh, the macro, where, where, where are we at in the Big Ten West? You know, where, where's everybody else at? And, and uh, you know, where do things have to go for, for us to achieve our goals? And then you go really quickly right back to the micro and the here and now and talk about going 1-0 and, and, and doing the things that winners do throughout the week to prepare. Uh, you know, and then, and then the, the macro you, you, you leave alone until maybe again early next week. So uh, if we want to achieve our goals, the only thing that matters is, is uh, this week. And I, I believe our guys will be focused. We have to be against the opponent we're playing. I, I, like I said, the Badgers in all three phases are physical. They're tough. They're fundamentally sound. They put a lot of pressure on you schematically. They're very talented. Uh, and I think they're playing with great confidence and great passion. So it's uh, going to be a great challenge. Let's focus on your team a little bit more before we, we delve a bit more into Wisconsin. You've seen this huge uptick offensively. and We talked about it coming back in from break. What do you attribute that to? I think we, were, we played very poorly up front uh, in the first four games, three of the first four games, um, and, and very poorly, quite frankly. And, you know, I think we've moved kind of in the uh, average to maybe slightly above average category in that, with that group. Uh, so there, there's been a lot of improvement, but we're still not where we want to be. We've been able to have pretty good balance. Uh, you know, you see the play here, Justin making a guy miss. Uh, he's played outstanding. Uh, he's, he's just been dynamic the whole year. And then the confidence in, in Clayton, you know, what a great throw here on the corner route to AC. And, uh, you know, he's sitting in, taking shots, making great throws. He did it again on Saturday against the Buckeyes and gave us a shot to win the ball game uh, with the way that he's playing right now. So I think it's a combination of balance and then improvement in the offensive line. But, you know, quite frankly, Dave, we're, we're, we're very far from being where we want to be. And, um, you know, we're just going to continue to grind here and hopefully improve here in the last month. I do want to ask you a little bit more about Austin Carr because it's such an unbelievable story. You know, there are walk-ons who you know about before they come and you have contact with them and you say, we might not be able to offer you a spot right away, but you get a spot on our roster and you can work your way toward a scholarship. 
And then there are guys like Austin Carr, who was completely unrecruited, <laughs> it right. is admitted to the university, and then gives you a buzz and says, hey, I'm, I'm thinking of coming and going out for the football team, someone you literally knew nothing about, and he has turned into the best receiver in the Big Ten. To you, what's the lesson in his story? Well, I think maybe for all of us that, uh, you know, don't believe the hype in recruiting, A, uh, <laughs> and B, a anybody can do whatever they set their mind for. And, and, and he has attacked every day to improve and get better. Now, he's an amazing route runner. He's got some of the easiest hands I've ever seen. Uh, he's got great chemistry with Clayton right now. He's, he's incredibly competitive. He's improving as a blocker. Uh, you know, he's a complete package as a wide receiver. Uh, and, and you couple that, I think, with just who he is as a person. He's very devout in his faith. He's very grounded in his faith. I, I, I think that that gives him a calmness uh, about who he is as a person. I, I don't see him get real high, and I don't see him really dip down. Maybe when we don't have success, he's been really consistent in his mental approach. And he's just a joy to be around. And we were on the practice field today, and, uh, you know, he gave me a rib shot when he was flying by me. And, uh, you know, he's a funny guy. He's got a great personality. I, I said at my press conference a couple weeks ago, you know, we're uh, a week away from the presidential election. There's no doubt I'm writing in Austin Carr. Uh, he, he's, my, he's my guy uh, that, that can lead our country uh, for the next four years. Uh, if we had more Austin Cars in a leadership role in our country, we'd be in a much better place. There might be an age situation there, Fitz, but... Uh, That's overrated. <laughs> I, I mean, look at that. Let's well, talk politics there's, there's, now. It's, it's in the I mean, there's all kinds of nonsense going right. on. It's I'm just, all, who I'm cares? Just not sure you can get it, I'm just not sure you can get it Throw out the of rules the out. The rules don't matter. We don't follow any rules anyways. We'll right. do whatever we want. Real quick, Wisconsin's defense, and you've kind of alluded to them. They've been fantastic this year. They have been banged up, and yet, I mean, you want to talk about next man up, and I know you talk about that a lot. Man, the next man up has been great for them every single time. As you watch this defense, what stands out to you as you prepare for them? Relentless. They're absolutely relentless. I, I, I love, I mean, as a former guy that wore a neck roll up to here and the game was played in, in an area about this wide, <laughs> uh, and we were all about defense in this conference, and we're not too far away from it right now, uh, th this group is a joy to watch. Uh, great with their hands, great with their feet. Violent with their ability to take on and get off blocks. Very talented on the outside from a man to man cover standpoint. Going to mix coverages up uh, to keep you guessing. Going to give you a different post snap look than they give you pre snap. Coach Wilcox and his staff have done a terrific job. Uh, you know, and, and then right there, great, great football IQ. I, I think that's what probably jumps out to me the most. Their football intelligence is at a very, very high level. Um, I've enjoyed watching them because we followed them here for. A couple weeks, so they've been in our cutups a lot, uh, and it's it's going to be a huge challenge for our offense, especially our offensive line. You know that that double eagle front with those two defense, those two outside backers. Um, you know Watt and Beagle, those guys are fun to watch. I mean, they've got my vote for first team All Big Ten right now, and um, it's uh, it's going to be a huge challenge for us, no no doubt about it. I mean, our stiffest challenge of the year for our offense is going to be this Saturday, without a doubt. Well, Coach, I miss seeing those uh, big shoulder pads and the neck rolls with the, with the linebackers. It, it, it takes me back, no question. Well, Rever, Rever kind of stole my question that I was going to ask oh, about. Oh, did I? About the turnaround and what was most significant in the turnaround. So I want to talk more specifically about the issues with the offensive line and kind of how those issues were addressed and where you saw them turn around. Was it mecha mechanics? Was it mentality? Yeah. What was the biggest change for those guys up front? Yeah, fundamentals. You know, we, we abandoned fundamental technique in a couple of our early games, trying to do too much. Um, you know, just all the, all the you, you know, you and I both tried to play the game. You know, when you get out of your fundamental comfort zone and you start doing things that are bad habits fundamentally, it, it doesn't matter who you're playing, where you're playing, you're going to get beat. And, and that's what was happening up front. And so we've just been grinding. I mean, I've got a little prepubescent voice going right now uh, just from the way that we've got to coach this team. And, and like I've said it a bunch, this might be the greatest group of kids that I've had the privilege to lead. I mean, they're unbelievable. They're, they're terrific. Um, but, but like a lot in society right now, I think guys need to be coached hard. They, they come into our programs, man, with this inflation of recruiting. That, that's not how this game is played in this conference and at this level, man. It is a fundamental punch a guy in the face and how are you going to handle that and are you going to come back and play fundamentally sound or are you going to cower and worry about your feelings and, and we were worrying about our feelings a little bit too much and that's my fault that's my responsibility to get that to the right place and so our temperament 
our mindset, our attitude, our physicality was not where it needed to be. I still don't believe we're where we need to be yet. Um, but I'm not going to stop until they tell us that I can't coach this team anymore. And then we're going to continue that, that mentality through our offseason like we always have. We just lost it a little bit. And uh, you've got to earn it back. And we're working hard to earn it back. Head coach of the Northwestern Wildcats, Pat Fitzgerald. Fitz, thanks as always for your time. And best of luck this Saturday. Yeah, we're going to need it, but how about these Cubbies tonight? I'm a Sox fan, Dave. You know that. Yes. Uh, but I'm not a Cub hater. This is a big game tonight, man, so I'm fired up to watch go that try. game. So as, go as, Cats, as go As Cubs. a fellow Sox that's fan, right, I am on go board Cubs. with you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, let's go. Oh, that's right. Ohio. I'm a Cleveland guy. Oh, come on. I was yeah, born right. in Cleveland. I know. You're in Chicago, yeah, though, right in now. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is still going. We were talking about Northwestern's path to potentially winning the West. Honestly, it is not all that complex. They need to win out. Now, again, that's easier said than done.